We're just doing it. We're doing the thing that we don't necessarily want to do, but here we are showing up anyway because we know that it's going to have good impacts going forward, which is what I hope this video provides for you. Good morning. Today, I want to talk about a shock, like a, something that shocked me when I learned this research. So when I um, work with people for recovery from binge and emotional eating, one of the main, or not one of the main, but one of the first things that we do together is calculate the cost of what binge eating is having on their lives. Now, cost can be many things, and we focus on each of those things. Today, we're going to be focusing on the actual financial cost of what it's impacting you to continue to binge and overeat on a regular basis. So if you've never watched one of my videos before, welcome. I'm Christine Cohen. I'm a registered dietitian. I'm a certified personal trainer, and I'm also a recovered binge eater. I work with people in group coaching to help them overcome this issue. And um, one of the main things that we work through is how is binge eating taking over your life? If, if you're unfamiliar with how binge eating differs from occasional overeating, um, go watch a past video because I want you to understand the difference. So we have our financial cost of binge eating. We also have the opportunity cost, the lost opportunities that we said no to because we said yes to binge eating. Those may be totally, un we may be totally unaware of, of what those um, things are, but essentially whenever you say yes to something, you're saying no to other things, um, regardless of if you realize what those are. And they may not even technically exist yet. So that's why we call it the opportunity cost. We are also losing out on the cost of you being present in your life. I like, I often use the expression, binge and emotional eating steals moments of your life because you're not present. You are somewhere else. You are completely choosing, um, whether it's because you need to or because it's just been your habit and you don't know any, any different, you are removing yourself from that moment. You're disconnecting by using food as a coping mechanism. You're numbing, if you will. Um, any emotion, any connection to that present moment because it's whatever your reasoning is, right? And we talked yesterday a little bit about why people use food to cope. Today, I wanna give you some facts. So just for the people live, how much do you think an average binge costs? I'll just give you a few beats. Good morning. Hi guys, good to see you. Feel free to say hi. So the average cost of a binge, are you ready for this? Is about 30 bucks, $30. And if you do binge eat or you have in the past, you may purposely go out to the grocery store and buy a bunch of foods that you don't normally keep in the house because they're foods that you tend to binge on. But when you're having the urge, you will just go to the store, buy that stuff, take it home, binge on it, and maybe throw it out. Maybe you finish it all. Maybe you eat some of it, toss the rest of it, whatever. Um, you may order something like through Seamless or through another like, online ordering, have it delivered, okay? Um, you may just go into what you already have in your kitchen and overeat and binge eat on that stuff. So there's obviously different choices here, but on average, the cost of one binge is about $30. So you're eating like, let's just say $30 worth of food in one sitting, which you're like, that's, that's not that much, right? Um, that's the cost of eating out one meal out a week. Okay. The thing is, Stuff compounds. So if you are somebody who is having a binge one time a week, and on average it's about $30 for all of the cost of that food, 
That adds up to $1,600 for the entire year. Think about what $1,600 is. That's not nothing. That was the cost of my New York City apartment rent for one month. That is the cost of a vacation. That is the cost of maybe a year of private school. Maybe that's the cost of taking care of your family or buying a certain amount of food for many, many months for you on a normal basis or your family on a normal basis. So just think what $1,600 means for you. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was binge eating regularly, it was more than once a week. And I would go to the grocery store pretty much every single time and buy new food for that. Um, so if we double that to two times a week, we're already upwards of over $3,000 just spent on food that you're binging on every single year. This does not include food that you eat outside of binges. This does not include food that you eat in a healthy, um, nourishing manner. This doesn't include food that you go out to eat with friends and family. This doesn't include food that you order in and eat in a way that's not a binge. This is specifically foods purely for binge eating episodes. So twice a week, that adds up to over $3,000 a year. Now, sometimes, personally, I would even binge eat more than that. Like when I was at my really lowest point, it was happening multiple times a week, just being completely vulnerable. And I'm saying it because I don't want people to feel like, you know, ashamed for, for this. I'm saying it because it is something that is a real struggle and a real problem. And I want you to know that like I have, I have been there. I have been in those shoes. I know how that feels physically, mentally, emotionally, and financially as well. But you don't realize it when you're doing it, right? Like you don't actually realize because you don't want to think about the cost. You don't even want to think about the moments that you're missing by binge eating. And you're certainly not thinking like, of all of the dollars that are adding up in the moment you are just so entranced you're just so focused on like i need food to get rid of this this physical uncomfortable feeling this mentally um anxiety driven feeling i just need to get this feeling out of my body that's all you're concerned about but later when you're out of that trance and you're thinking back to the actions and you're feeling all of a sudden the guilt and the shame about the actions come up, you may realize like, oh shit, like how much did I just spend? So yeah, so even if you tripled that, because there were definitely some weeks where I was eating, um, I was having three binges a week over the weekends, whatever, um, and that adds up even more. So I don't want to give you this information to make you feel worse. That's not my goal ever. My goal is to have you start to think not from a, I can't do anything about this perspective to what can I do about this? I do want to recover. How is this impacting my life? Like taking in the gravity of how this is costing you on many, many levels is leverage. Leverage is using either the pain of where you don't want to be anymore or the pleasure of where you want your life to go to change your actions now in the present. And it is powerful and it is something that you can get in touch with every single moment of your day to remind you, what am I doing? Like, where am I going? Do I want to keep choosing something that's maybe gratification in the present, in, in the moment, immediate gratification, but later on, I feel like crap, and this is not the choice I wanna keep making, but I don't know how to get out of it. So this is what we're going to be touching on and discussing 
on Saturday, January 23rd in the Stop Binge Eating in 2021 group workshop. I highly, highly, highly invite you to come if this is something that you're struggling with, whether it's recent, whether it's been years that you've been struggling with this, whether it's been decades. I touch on all different age groups. I touch on the reasons why we keep doing this, even though we know it's not healthy, even though we know it's not good for our, not even just our physical selves, but like our, our souls, our mental selves, who we are. It changes how we show up in our lives. And take, again, like taking in the gravity of what that cost is, is so powerful, you guys. Not from a place of shame, because shame is toxic. Shame is a poison that if we hold too long, it's going to completely poison our whole system and freeze us and keep us there. But it's not something that we need to hold. We can let it go at any moment and we can start to make change in an empowered way, little by little, that suddenly we start to feel free of the holds that this thing has had on us for years or forever how long you've been dealing with it. So if that is something that you're interested in working on and learning about and coming to a session that is going to be about 90 minutes long, the first 60 is going to be me teaching and talking and taking you through some of these um, some of these points. And then the last 30 minutes is going to be like a one-on-one group coaching situation where if you choose to, you can come into the open seat and we'll have a one-on-one dialogue. It's going to be great. The link is in my bio. It's $27. It's a um, 90 minute workshop and you can sign up today. So I hope that this was of value. And if you have any questions, you can always DM me. I'm happy to um, break some stuff down for you even further. Have a wonderful day. I'm about to go do the warrior workout, Ah, get my dose of caffeine to my muscles (laughs) and wake up for the day. So have a great one. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.